What's up guys, Velocity back with another Unreal Engine 5 material tutorial, and in today's video, you'll be learning how to create a custom post-process fog material. I'll be showing you how to create a distance-based color gradient effect that allows you to control a near, mid, and far color for the fog in your scene to really portray more of a stylized look, as you might have seen in games like Firewatch or Zelda Breath of the Wild. One of the biggest reasons to use a post-process fog material is that it fixes the problem of the built-in exponential height fog not working correctly with post-process cell shading. If you guys haven't seen my most recent tutorial on how to create the ultimate post-process cell shader, I definitely recommend giving that a watch as it's a very high quality cell shader that you can implement into your game pretty easily and it has complete support for metallic surfaces, reflections, ambient occlusion, outlines, and more. Speaking of exponential height fog, I'll also be including a method to mimic the effect of the vertical gradient that is associated with exponential height fog. As you can see here, the fog sort of fades up onto the mountains over that distance. Just before we hop in, if you guys like what we do here at Pitchfork and want us to continue to bring you high quality Unreal Engine 5 tutorials, the number one way to support us is to check out our new game, Skyblocker, which we just released on Steam for only 10 bucks. It's a fun and relaxing 3D puzzle game where you stack blocks infinitely high until the physics or the elements knock it over. It's complete with awesome unlockable block skins, multiple levels, and a global online leaderboard to compete with your friends or others around the world. We hope you enjoyed as much as we enjoyed making it. Now let's get into the tutorial. The first thing I'll do to get started is to right click, make a new folder, call it materials. If you don't already have one, you'll wanna do this as well. And then inside there, I'll make another folder called post process, just to keep things a little bit organized. Inside here, I'll right click, make a new material, and I'll call this PP underscore fog for fo uh, post process fog, open that up. Then first thing we need to do is change the material domain from surface to post process. We should only have this emissive color output. And then we can scroll down on the left and find blendable location. It's important to change this to scene color after DOF. It's basically the order in which it renders the post process material on top of your scene. Very important to have it on this. If you don't see scene color after DOF, that means you're probably on an older version of the engine and that's totally fine. You'll probably see an option called before tone mapping and you'll wanna set it to that one. So I'll set mine to scene color after DOF. Then I can begin to get out some nodes. So I'll right click and search for scene texture. There's a ton of things in this scene texture ID on the left, as you can see here, all sort of, sorts of stuff. You got your roughness channel, your normal map channel, and there's also this post process input zero, and that's just the scene as you see it usually. So as you can see here, this is my scene, and this just gets that same scene. From here, we wanna drag off and get the component mask, and we can click the drop down here or on the left. Uh, just make sure you have B selected as well. So you should have R, G, and B. From here, we can hold L and click for a lerp, and this will be our A input on the lerp, and then the B will be our color information. So to do that, um, I'll get a color out. So I'll hold three and click on my keyboard and then right click, convert to parameter, and I'll name this color A. I'll set the default value to white and then I'll set it to be in a group called color. Now, when I duplicate this, it should already be in that group and I just have to change the um, color A to color B. And I'll do it one more time for color C. Obviously you could do this as many times as you wanted, but for the purpose of the tutorial, I'll just do three colors. Speaking of three colors, we can right click and search for three color blend, and we can plug in the colors to the respective inputs. And then we need a uh, switch. So I'll right click and search for switch, but we don't want the regular switch here. We want the static switch parameter, and we'll call this multiple colors, question mark. And if it's true, we wanna use the result of our three color blend, but if it's false, we'll just use our color A. And then this switch should also be in that color group. So it should be in the drop down now when we click next to none. So now we have those four things in the color group. Now we need the alpha for our colors. And what we'll do is right click and get a depth fade. And we need a scalar parameter. So I'll hold S and click, and I'll call this color fog amount. We'll set this to a default value of one. So if we do use our multiple colors to be true, 
will have the full amount by default. And then you can lower this if you wanna lower the effect. And then I'll set this in the group color and then duplicate it. And I'll uh, rename it from color fog amount to color fog fade. And the default value here will be 50,000. This will be the distance at which the colors sort of spread out from each other. And you'll have to adjust that based on your project. I'll plug this into the alpha and I'll plug the switch into the B here. So now we have the color information in our default scene. Now we need the alpha for the fog effect overall, like how intense the fog is and the height logic. So I'll leave this alone for now and scroll down a bit. And then we can right click for a, another depth fade node. And we need some more scalar parameters. So I'll hold S and click. I'll call this fog opacity, default value of one. And I'll put this into a group called trolls. Plug this into opacity, copy and paste this. And then we'll do fog fade. This will be the distance from the camera at which the entire effect starts to happen. I'll do a thousand by default. And again, since I copy and pasted this node, it should already be in that controls group. If not, you'll just click the drop down and select controls. From here, we need to drag off and search for a saturate node. This just helps the um, value from getting too out of hand. And then we can do the height uh, effect. So to do that, I'll get the world position node and then I'll drag off of Z. If you don't see Z here, you'll probably just have the XYZ. You'll just wanna drag off get a component mask and only have B selected. X, Y, and Z is the same as R, G, and B. Um, and yeah, the B channel from X, Y, and Z is the same as getting the Z. If that's confusing, that's okay. All you need to know is you need the, the Z or the B. So from Z, I'll get a subtract node and then we need a scalar parameter. So I'll hold S and click and I'll call this height start. And basically what we're doing here is subtracting from the world, the, the Z, which is the up and down, where this fog should start. So default value I'll set to be 15,000 maybe. And then I'll set this into a group called height. From here, we can drag off and search for divide. And this will allow us to fade the effect from the starting point, which is the height. So I'll um, name this height fade. And this will be a negative value, so I'll do a, a negative sign, and then 500,000. These are values that you'll have to play with and adjust for your specific project, but they're a good starting point. From here, we need to, whoops, also saturate this here to keep it between a value of zero and one. And then we can hold M and click for a multiply, and then we'll multiply these two effects together. So this is the, the distance from the camera that it starts, and then this is the distance from the Z position in the world at which it starts, so the height. But we might not want to use the height information, so or the height effect, so we can add another switch. So I'll right click and search for static switch parameter, and I'll call this height fog, question mark. And if it's true, we'll use this. Maybe it makes more sense if I bring this up here. This, and if it's false, we'll use the saturate. Sorry, there's not really an easy way to lay this out. Maybe I'll do it like this. So make sure that the multiply from both of them is going into true, and the false is just the fog opacity and fog fade. From here, we can drag this up to the lerp in the alpha. So I'll maybe organize this a little bit. I'll zoom in. I'll highlight everything from this branch, click C on my keyboard, and I'll name this opacity and then from here i'll select everything click c call it color and we can plug the lerp into the emissive color and i just want to double check here so height fog should be in the group height oh and it looks like i flipped these two parameters around this should be height start and this should be height fade so what i'll do is disconnect them both Drag height fade over here. I'll set this value to be 15,000 and the fade 
to be negative 500,000. Plug those up like that. And then we can save and we can resume. Once we're back in the level, the first thing that I wanna do is to disable my exponential height fog that I already have from the default level. Yours probably has this, if it doesn't, that's fine. It, you don't wanna have this if you're using the post-process one. However, you can use them in conjunction and I'll show that at the end of the video on how to use this to sort of improve the post-process fog. But for now, I'll disable this by hiding it. And then I'll go into my post-process volume. If you don't already have one of these, go to this little cube with the plus, go to volumes and then find post process volume, add it to your scene. And then in the details panel, search for infinite and make sure infinite extent unbound is checked. This makes sure that the post process volume covers your entire scene and you don't have to mess with the scale or position of the volume. Next we can um, right click on our material for the fog, make a material instance. I'll leave it the same name. I like to do this for things that I'll probably only use one of, because for example, in my post-process folder here, I might have multiple post-process materials, for example, one for underwater, one for when I'm getting um, hurt but from an enemy. And if I only have one of them, this keeps it so they're right next to each other. And now I can go to my post-process volume, scroll down until I find post-process materials. And so you'll see I already have one in the array. This is my cell shader from my previous video. If I turn this from zero to one, you can see that the cell shader is turned on and the mountains are cell shaded in the grass and whatnot. I'll disable that for now by setting it back to zero and then we'll see how it works with the fog in a minute. But as you can see, I can add an array element. So you can stack these on top of each other, which is really handy. So then I'll click choose, asset reference, and then by default, it should be set to one. And then I'll drag in my fog instance. But before I do that, I actually wanna open it up. And I wanna set the opacity from one to 0 0.1. And this is very important because if you drag it straight in, it will be very bright. So now I can drag this in and we get this nice foggy effect. And if I go ahead and play, you can see we get a foggy environment. Now, if I uh, close out, open my material instance, we can turn on all of these parameters. First thing that we can play with is the color. Obviously it's going to change the color and you can get some really cool feelings and um, different sort of temperatures of your scene just by changing the color of your fog, which I really, really like. I'll set it to be just slightly bluish like the uh, default one comes. And then from here we can turn on use multiple colors, and then we can turn on B and C. If I set B, you can see it only affects that middle ground color. Maybe I'll set it to a yellowish color, and then C, if I back up maybe a little bit, it only affects that really far color, as you can see. So maybe I'll set it to be sort of a deep pinkish, color like that. Now we have three distinct colors. You might want to art direct your colors a little bit better than I am, but for the purpose of the video, it should be fine. I'll turn on color fog amount and color fog fade. The color fog fade is the distance at which the colors fade from each other. So if I lower this um, to be near the camera, you can see that it, it just happens re really close to the camera. So I'll set that back to the default. And if I stretch it, it'll happen over more of a distance. So now you can see we don't even get that third color until I uh, zoom way out. So you can see that effect there. And obviously it's covering the very far distance. So I'll set that back to 50,000 so we can see all three colors. And yeah, so you can mess around with this. Maybe I'll set it to more of a greenish for the far color. And the middle color, I'll do a bluish. And the close color, I'll do a maybe a reddish. It's a little bit more interesting. And if the colors are a little bit too intense to you and you don't want to mess with the colors themselves anymore, you like the hue that they're at, you can actually lower the color fog amount and it just softens the effect and brings it more towards just the color A or the color B. It sort of like makes it not so intense. So maybe 0.5 is decent. Now we're starting to get that really nice Firewatch feel, the, the feel that you get in Breath of the Wild, where they, they do this sort of distance-based color effect.
All right, now that I've dialed in the colors and the distances how I like, I can experiment with the height fog effect. Now, one thing to note is this doesn't always look better. For example, just having the fog in the scene altogether, covering the sky a little bit, can look really, really nice. And especially, it's great for stylized games. The height fog effect is um, just a nice thing to play around with and maybe see if it looks better for your purposes. And it gives you that nice vertical gradient effect where over, over the distance going upwards, it sort of fades out. So as I enable this, it'll look like it goes away, but we just need to set our opacity back to one. And then you can see we get the fog back and then we can play with the um, height start. So if I lower this, you can see it's just laying down low there in the valley. And as I increase it, you get more and more of the effect. I like to lower it just enough so it fades out above the tips of the mountains so you get this gradient over the distance going upwards. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, if I go back to my post-process volume and I re-enable my cell shader, you can see that we still have the fog and it looks pretty good in my opinion. And if you're going for a cheap as possible fog effect and you don't care too much about like the very far distance, like this harsh line, then you're pretty much good to go and you're done and you don't need to have this exponential height fog. You could technically delete this, but if you want to um, sort of mimic, or sorry, not mimic, mitigate this effect of the harsh line and the distance, you can keep the exponential height fog, re-enable it, and then in the details panel, set the start distance to maybe a million, so it's really far away. And then what you can do is click on the fog in scattering color, click the eyedropper, and then eyedrop the color of your uh, distance on the bottom here in the, uh, the lower horizon. So now that I uh, click that, it sets the fog in scattering color and it looks much better. It still looks a little bright though. It looks kind of like a glowing line. So what we can do is click on the in scattering color again, and then just lower the value, maybe increase the saturation just until it matches a little bit better. Then from here to sort of style it some more, we can lower the fog height fall off and it'll stretch that fog effect into the horizon a little bit more and gives you that nice stylized look. Now there will be some angles where it doesn't look so great. This is an example of that. And that's because of the way the sky atmosphere works with the sun. And it just depends on the angle. For example, if I rotate my sun behind me, then it fades really nicely. But if I look this way, we can see that line. So it's just a little bit of a trade off there. But what's important is that it's working great with the cell shading and it looks like we have some nice fog. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video on how to create stylized fog inside Unreal Engine via the post-process material. Now, again, whether or not you're using this alongside my post-process cell shader or not, this is a great way to add stylized fog that is super customizable into your game and really fine tune it to get the feeling that you're trying to portray to your player. Now, if you guys learned anything at all or found this video helpful, please consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing to our channel as it greatly helps us out and lets us know that you wanna see more videos like this one. This has been Velocity with Pitchfork Academy and I'll see you in the next one.